Well guys, here we are for the 2200 subscriber special, even though we are now past 3200 subscribers. Again, thank you guys so much for staying with me, thank you for hanging out with me, thank you for discovering me. Uh, it's really given me an excuse to basically just keep doing these top 10s, because they're always going to be a bit belated, and I think at this point we all understand it's really just an excuse to be able to pull down the toys and have a good time for a video. And we're finally talking about one of those Touchstone Transformer series for me, because Armada was the first Transformers cartoon I fell in love with. After the big introduction of the movie, I was able to get my hands on a couple of the Armada DVDs for Christmas, and it, alongside animated, really did form the bedrock of everything I loved of Transformers. I didn't have many Armada toys as a kid, in fact, I don't think I had any Armada toys as a kid aside from our little Happy Meal guy here, but I have such an unparalleled love for these figures. It breaks my heart that I had to spend over a decade growing up on YouTube and listen to some of my favorite content creators just constantly bash Armada. Was Armada always great? No. Were the toys always good for the adult collector? Also no. But you want to know something about Armada toys? They were never boring. Every Armada toy they ever made, there is something worth talking about. And with that said guys, just thank you so much for hanging out with me. It's been really special, especially these past few months just hanging out doing these videos and I'm really excited to just be able to share a series that I really do have a lot of love in my heart for. So. Let's talk about some Armada. At number 10, who do you even think you are because he's a friggin' superstar? This is Iceberg. Yeah, he's a minicon. Yeah, he's one of those snowmobiles. Watch him go. He can't go as well as he used to, but damn it, he used to be able to go like a champ. Transform him. Go. 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 Transform. Yay. And then head up. Head out. Yay. Look at him. So, why do I have a random Minicon, who by the way is a Minicon who's supposed to be in a team, as number 10 on the list? Well, for one, I like his design. I think he's cool. I really love how the Pinchers become shoulder pads. He kind of reminds me of the Insecticons. But two, Hasbro apparently thinks Iceberg is a breakout solo star because out of every Minicon, every Minicon ever made, he's the one that got a Creon Microchanger. At number 9, it is the physical embodiment of depression known as Will Jack and his Minicom partner, Windshear. Um, I really like Will Jack's design. I love his character in the show. I don't have a complete one. He's missing his missiles that would turn into his swords. But that doesn't change the fact that he's just a really sharp looking bot. Obviously I ro uh, inspired by G1 Sideswipe. I love the big slash in the Autobot logo, and I love how tired and glum his head sculpt is. I just shot a review of this guy, so if you want more of my thoughts, go check it out there. Just know, I think they did a great job at making a very worn down and tired former Autobot as a toy, and making it to where even as a kid, you could look at this and understand, this one's probably not too happy being a Decepticon. It's a good toy. But I think it really is carried by a stellar, stellar head sculpt and a very good paint job. Because at the end of the day, Will Jack is not the most articulated, he's not the funnest to transform, he doesn't have the best gimmick, but he is pretty cool, and he definitely stands out on a shelf. Oh, people are gonna burn my house down for this one. At number eight, it's Armada Starscream, and I'm sure people are gonna question this. What, Ramban John? you gush about Armada Starscream all the time. You talk about how this is one of your favorite Starscream designs. You talk about how this is possibly your favorite character of Starscream. I, is that's all true. All that is true. I do really love the Starscream. At the same time, there's another version of him who comes in a color scheme and under a name that I prefer. And alongside that, the character of Armada Starscream, it really, really hits his stride when he changes up the primary colors, you know? Don't get me wrong, I'm always gonna be happy I have the original color scheme, the original design, and I've had this toy for years, I still adore it. And if I didn't have the other one kicking about, this would have been number one. And he's still one of the favorites. He's still in the top 10. He still has a great jet mode. He's just not going to be as high up as he would be when I have a version of him that I like more. 
but he's still just an absolutely spectacular toy. At number seven, we have one of my single favorite designs in all of Transformers, even though the toy doesn't really live up to that design. It's sideways. There's just so much to like here, from the three different heads you can have, to a really good motorcycle mode, and I do still think the toy is really fun, even if it's not hitting a lot of the aesthetic notes of the anime design. I think that if this sideways had thinned out a little bit more and maybe had more of a defined lower abdomen, this could have easily been number one on the list. This could have been all-time great Transformer toy. But, you know, they had to work in gimmicks, he was in the aesthetic of the toy line, it was a motorcycle Transformer, and in the early 2000s that was very scary. There's a lot of things that I can understand how Sideways wound up like this. Just know that even in this very compromised state, Sideways is still one of my absolute favorites. Still a character that I absolutely adore and think should come back. And yes, I'm going to say it a few times during this video, I am waiting for my new Legacy United Sideways, or I guess now Age of the Primes Sideways. He is begging for it. Move over, Grapple, because at number six, it's the real Master Builders. This is Smokescreen and Liftdoor. If you saw my review of these guys, you know why I love them. They're just two gay trucks going and building things. You got a forklift, you got a tow truck. What are they doing? They're building. They're blue collar, baby. They're union men. When it came to Cybertronian worker rights, they were there before anyone. They're union people, man. They are so blue collar that they have blue faces, and Liftor is actually just the best minicon in all of Armada. Smokescreen is pretty limited as a toy, but he's filled with so much character and so many gimmicks, I always have so much fun just pulling him off the shelf. From his massive extending arm, to the toe line coming out his chest, to just his chubby little face, I think that he is the perfect average Joe of Cybertron, and I'm so happy that he was able to find his boyfriend who loves him for who he is. And also, I'm pretty sure that's just a tiny Optimus Prime wearing a monocle. But you know, you do you, Liftor, and Smokescreen, you never change, baby. I cannot wait until Legacy, well, again, Age of the Primes, get to you. Because as much as I love your original form, I kind of want to see what you'd look like if you had working elbows. At number five, yes, I'm gonna go through all of it again. It's one of my favorite designs in all of Transformers, and I cannot wait for Age of the Primes to do another one. Yada, yada, yada. Yes, I love Armada Demolishor. I think he is still one of the best looking figures in all of Armada, but unlike Sideways and Smokescreen, I think he actually wears all the gimmicks well. He is still a fully featured robot with good articulation for the day. He has a great minicon la launching gimmick, he's able to shoot out his missiles, Blackout has so much integration within the toy. Again, another one that I've done a recent review for, so go check that one out if you want to know all my thoughts. Just know, I think Demolishor has the best interplay with his minicon out of anyone in Armada, save for one big exception we're going to get to in a minute but I think he is just a phenomenally fun toy, and I would definitely recommend him to anyone who just wants to get a very weird, almost toady slash enforcer tank mode for Megatron. This is basically proto Lugnut. He is an equal measure a butler as he is a bruiser. Oh my, oh my. Oh my god, securing his spot on the Mount Rushmore of this list, it had to be Tidal Wave. An absolute titan of a figure. You want to see how big he is? Here's Sideways. He's about, you know, average height for a deluxe nowadays, maybe a little bit big. And as you can see, he barely comes up to Tidal Wave's knee. This is just a behemoth of a bot, befitting something that turns into a literal aircraft carrier. Only he doesn't just turn to an aircraft carrier, he then turns into three smaller ships, one of them being a smaller aircraft carrier. He may not be the most articulated guy in the world, but he is just an absolute giant, a goliath, and too big for you to care about the size complaints. He's also filled to the brim with places to put minicons, including one of his vehicle modes being a landing craft with seats for the minicons. He is just the perfect playset for minicons, similar to how a really good Titan can be a perfect playset for Legends class figures 
or just normal Titan Masters, Micro Masters even. I think Tidal Wave is spectacular. And even though I do think the current Tidal Wave, the Legacy United Tidal Wave, does a lot of things better than this original, it will never have the same specialness that this original had for me, because this was a toy I wanted for so long as a kid, and when I was able to get him as a teenager, that was a pretty good day. At number three, and representing the Armada Bendy Prime, this is Universe 1.0 Ultra Magnus. Now, I know it's not technically an Armada toy, but I count it. It is an Armada mold. And alongside that, at the end of the day, I'm just using this as my Armada Prime. I like a lot of the Armada Primes out there, but there's just nothing better than this deluxe one. I think the head sculpt specifically, that's the best capturing of Armada Optimus in plastic form ever. A great truck mode, a wonderful transformation, an unobtrusive gimmick, great proportions, it helps that Armada is possibly my favorite look for Optimus ever. When I close my eyes and think of Optimus Prime, I think of Classics Optimus, and I think of this Optimus. And just having this good a figure of him in the collection means a lot. I do still want the proper Optimus. Ultra Magnus is going to be a great placeholder until I get that Optimus. And I am curious about Legacy Evolution Armada Optimus, if I can ever get my hands on that. But for what he is, my boy here... My boy here is doing just fine. You know what? I'll say it. I want Gary Chalk Optimus Prime to tuck me into bed at night and read me bedtime stories. I want to see you admit the same, cowards. Oh my god, look at those abs. Oh my god, look at those biceps. Oh no, he's hot! All kidding aside, I'll admit it. Armada Predacon has kind of stolen my heart. Like, it helps that he's just an incredibly fun toy. It is just a spectacular figure, by every measure. And even though it's not Megatron, even though it's just a soulless repaint, it kind of makes me love the toy even more. I'm able to kind of just put my own personality onto this guy. And I think it works. This is just one of the best toys Kenner ever put out for Beast Wars. And give it this very toxic looking paint scheme, it makes it feel like this guy should be a big deal on the Armada shelf. Predacon may have never been in the show. Predacon may have been put in just so we could fill out some of the toy waves. But that doesn't change the fact that I do think that he is the second best figure on this list. And if it wasn't for personal nostalgia, I would probably put him at number one. Because he has just absolutely stolen my attention, my imagination, my heart, and a center spot on the shelf. Because he is just a perfect or close to it. There it is, the face that launched a thousand sad boy AMVs on YouTube. At number one, it just had to be Armada Thundercracker. And let's be honest, we know it's not Thundercracker, we know it's Super Starscream, but regardless of who it is, it might be my favorite design in all of Transformers, and it's the reason why Thundercracker is my favorite character in Transformers. It also is a huge reason as to why I think Armada Starscream is one of the best characters the series has ever had. Yeah, he had a great arc. He had a great voice director. He had a he had a great voice actor. He had a good look. He had a good toy. He was just the best. I think that there's a lot that could be done with a, an Armada Starscream in the modern fandom. And I kind of hate that we've never really gone back to this at all. Starscream, as time has gone on, has just started to double down in being sadistic, being cruel. But it was cool to see a Starscream who did have a sense of honor to him. It was cool to see a Starscream whose hatred of Megatron wasn't from ambition or greed, but just from utter disgust with his commander. It's a great Starscream. And this toy, even though itself has some issues, articulation's not the best... It's not going to change the fact that when I see him, I'm happy. I'm happy that this character exists. I'm happy that this got to be my first real exposure to Starscream. And I'm happy that this is how I got to learn about Thundercracker, my favorite character in Transformers now. And I'm very, 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 very happy to have this guy on my shelf. And by the way... Yeah. I like the fact that when you push his belly, he still does the sounds. That makes it a little bit more fun. But Thundercracker, Swindle, if I had to sell every other figure in the collection, 
and I could only say, like, keep ten of them. I think this Thundercracker would be going into the pile. Because, alongside some of my childhood survivors, this Thundercracker means a lot to me, and I'm happy that he's just here now. Bringing my top three back in, and I'm going to say it again, there's never going to be a Transformers line like Armada ever again. No, not every toy was great, and most of the toys were bloated. Many of them were messy, or could have used a second pass. But you could tell, you could tell the passion and the fun that was being had in designing these characters. It was one of the most unmitigated, most free, and dare I say experimental eras of Transformers ever. And even though it was held in disdain at the time, and even though, growing up, I had to listen to a lot of people who got to live through G1 and Beast Wars turn their nose up at old Armada, I am so happy that nowadays, it seems like more and more people my age and younger are really able to see that there was a lot of good here, both in the fiction, and the character design, and the toy design. It was a beautiful little series. It was great and terrible. It was majestic and clunky. It was unique and homogenous. It was a contradiction in so many ways. And yet, like the world's most beautiful train wreck, or the world's most ugly masterpiece, you really couldn't look away from it. I consider myself very lucky that Armada got to be a part of my childhood. I consider myself very lucky that Armada got to be such a big part of my childhood.